and welcome to the Enchantress Society with Tia Johnson, a place where you get to be you, where you get to unlock your magic in a sacred and judgment-free zone. The Enchantress Society is your witchy sisterhood of enchanting women who guides and supports you along your spiritual journey from the mundane to the magical. I invite you to sit for a spell as I interview guests and spill the spiritual tea on how we can create the magical life we deserve. Hello and welcome back to another amazing episode in this cosmic series. This is a topic that I'm so looking forward to diving into because it's so important. And the more we understand this, the more we understand ourselves. And that is the sun, moon, and rising sign, Why It Matters with Lucia Ribello. As a child, Lucia learned about zodiac signs whenever she could, but being a practicing Catholic at the time, she had to remain closeted and learning about the stars. Later in life, Lucia had a reading with a psychic, and he reminded her about her desire about astrology that kept coming up, and she finally acknowledged that she had been holding it back. So the minute Lucia could start my, or her astrology training, she did. She always was fascinated by it and knew it was her calling to help people understand themselves better. Yes, you can visit her at thesparklewithin.com. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. And, you you know, even this this topic, even if people, and, and this is my opinion, of course, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, elaborate. Uh, I feel like if people at least know their sun, moon, and rising sign, their life would be so much better. <laughs> they understand absolutely. what's going on. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Because our sun sign only is just one part of, you know, what really make us whole. And that's why there's a lot of people that really do not identify with their sun sign. And it's because we have our moon sign and a rising. So let's break it down. What is the sun Mm -hmm. sign? The sun sign is your personality, your life force, self-expression, vitality. Whereas the moon is our feelings and emotions, our emotional bodies. That's why, you know, you can be an Aries, which is very strong. You know, your sun sign, very, you know, um, direct very on it but if your moon your feelings and emotions are in pisces then you will be absorbing the feelings and the emotions everything around you that will make you feel more vulnerable and you may be like i'm an aries why am i acting this way why am i (laughs) Mm -hmm. being so mushy well it's because it's the moon right the feelings and emotions how we process it and the rising sign also called ascendant is the same name to it is our soul and who we are rising to be it's also our appearance our attitude is the mask we wear and Sometimes this is what people see first. So it's very interesting because we can be talking to a, I can be talking to a person and I'm looking at the rising sign, you know, that's what's coming up. And I may ask them like, Hey, are you a Virgo? I'm like, they're like, no, um, uh, I'm a cancer, you know, and it's because that's what's coming up. That is the mask that other people see. So that is the mask that other people see from us too. So let me ask you, what is your sun, moon and rising? Yeah, just as you was talking, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my son is a Virgo, uh, my rising is a Gemini, and my moon is in Pisces. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so sun in Virgo? Yeah. Uh-huh. In Gemini and rising Pisces? <laughs> 
<laughs> yep. I got that rice and spices. Wow. Oh my God. So let's break it down. If you don't mind, I can, if I, I know I can use you as an example or I can use me as an example, but sure. you're, you're fine. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, sun, sun in Virgo, moon in Pisces and rising in Gemini. Yep. <laughs> okay. Rice in Gemini, moon in Pisces. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah, so you, wow. I didn't even know you were moon in Pisces when I gave that example. <laughs> So, okay. So the first thing that we want to look at is we want to look at modes and we want to look at elements. So your sun, moon, and rising, sun in Virgo, moon in Pisces. So that right there, they get alone. Why? Because the element, the element is earth for your Virgo. And so it means that your self-expression, the way you are, you know, your personality, life force is in agreement with your water, the water of your Pisces moon. So because water and earth in astrology, get alone, mm. air and fire, get alone. Any combination of those don't. So when you have, so the one that ought man out between the three of you, between, <laughs> between the, your sun, moon and rising is your Gemini rising. Why? Because it's an earth sign. So it, an air with earth from the Virgo, it's, you know, struggling a little bit and the air with the water is for sure struggling. So the odd man out is the Gemini. So part of the, one of the things that you need to like cultivate more is to like, okay, I really got to you know, tap into my rising sign. So you can really like fully embrace all your sun moon and rising so when you have those you know that combination of water and earth what it is what is that combination well it's very grounded stable reliable if you know if you were if you were to have a combination of air and fire it's super energized but you are very grounded reliable People can count on you. You're very dependable. You, you, you feel for others. But at the same time, you are able to get things done. You don't get lost in, the, mm -hmm. uh, in just the planning. You also are doing or you're not, you don't get lost in just the wishing. You implement. Mm -hmm. So because you have that combination, do you relate to that? Oh, yes, most definitely. Yes. So, you know, got to cultivate that, uh, that Gemini. So what does that represent? So let's break it down now the other way. So you have, you know, your Virgo, the Virgo, this is the side of you that is service oriented, detail, kind, but at the same time, critical of yourself and others. You know, you're loyal, practical, and can be a little bit of a warrior. Do you relate to that? Uh, a little, you might want to swap that out for a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have conversations with myself 2 a.m. Like, wait a minute, Tia, stop. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, a little to understatement. <laughs> I have to check myself constantly. <laughs> yes, Virgos uh, struggle with feeling enough. So, you know, this is, and, and because they're so perfectionist. They are. And the funny thing is that you are getting it right. You are just just by knowing that you're a Virgo, you are doing things in an amazing way you, because the quality control, the uh, the wanting the, the wanting to do things right is the, uh, being of service to others. So the working your your ethics around work are fantastic and it's so phenomenal. But you still, in a way, feel like you're not getting it right. It's so like, I am enough and work on being enough. It's crucial for Virgos. Do you relate mm -hmm. to that? Oh, oh, yeah. I. It's so funny because I always feel like, well, even backtrack a little bit. You know, when people say, don't compare yourself. I'm like, I have battles with myself. I'm only literally <laughs> looking at myself. Stop telling me. <laughs> when people, you know, they try to... Yeah. Um, you know, be helpful and like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like, I see where you're going with this, but you know, you don't know me. So, and it's funny every time. So I always make like pop culture references. And every time I say, you don't know me, I automatically think of T.I. because that was me and my pop pop saying, he would go, you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, 
I get it. You want to be helpful. You don't know me, but trust me, I'm not comparing. It's literally me against me. So when, when you're saying all that, I'm like, yes, it is so spot on because I do a lot and I, I do take time to give myself credit, but I just want to do so much more. Like I just want to help as many people as possible. And it's like, I cannot stop. So I'm just constantly checking, like, is that enough? Uh, should we tweet this one? Should we add more? So yeah, it's just a constant, not from a, like a lack of confidence, but just like, I want to give more. I want to make sure it's right for the people. How can I do that? Exactly. Yes. It's not a lack of confidence because your capability is phenomenal. It's, you know, the, the, the way you're doing things are great. It's just like, is it enough? Because you are, yeah, I constantly wanted to give more to him because mm-hmm. this is a, a service oriented sign. It's, you know, constantly, you know, making sure, but as you give enough to others, make, make sure that you're giving enough to yourself. Mm-hmm. So now let's talk about your moon, your moon in Pisces. So in a water sign, when you have the moon in a water sign, it's you need a timeout. Your emotional body needs a timeout. So mm-hmm. what does this mean is that, you know, let's say you're in an argument and you cannot get your words out. Okay, timeout. I need to recalibrate, you know, so I need to reset. And you can you step away. Okay, how am I feeling? Because with Pisces, the emotions get lost, can get lost in just too much feeling. Now, because you're very going and that's ruled by Mercury, that is very helpful to you to be able to put uh, the feelings, the words, you know, all that into words, the emotions, put them into words. Because in Pisces, there's a tendency that you may get just lost in the feeling and not being able to articulate how you're feeling. So Do you true. Connect <laughs> with that, yes. The, yeah, th- there have been times where literally, Lucilia, uh, Lucia, uh, I had um, so many words stuck in my head that I couldn't even talk about like I I would just say words and and it's to the point where my best friend gets it and then my project manager gets it like when I'm really excited about something it's like I can't even or like if I'm upset like I need to and it ends up being very colorful words and you got to take all the colorful words out sometimes but other times it's just like I can't even because I'm thinking so fast and I can't even verbalize it so it's like I just need to time out like I need to do like you say recalibrate get my words together because it's that and it's also uh <laughs> this happened a while ago where uh and, and this can happen again too but when I get so angry and I just want to flip a table over you know I want to punch something but I just start crying because I don't want to get violent you know but it's like I try to talk to you I try to communicate with you and you still are doing what you want to do now I'm frustrated because I try to very um matter of factly as, as direct but without emotional you know uh like condescending tone like I very directly kindly expressed what's going on and still you choose to do that now now I'm angry <laughs> but I'm gonna cry instead because <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I don't want to get violent. So I had to tell people I'm not afraid. I'm just really angry. So don't mistake these tears. <laughs> yes, for sure. And now something that is very important for Pisces moon, you know, when your your moon falls in Pisces, it's a boundaries because you can mm-hmm. be too open for everyone else. And that's when you may reach you come up to this point that you are exactly describing because mm-hmm. there's a boundary issue with yourself and others so be mindful of it the people not trespassing your mm-hmm. you know your boundaries because you're very intuitive with this Pisces moon you're very compassionate and can be overly trusting mm-hmm. and you know that is the um highly creative which is fantastic that's the high road of it on the you know on on one side you are you know highly creative gentle and wise but on the other side, you know, the uh, on the the low road, the low side of it is that it can be a little bit indecisive. And that's when you can get swayed by other people's uh, input. And that's when, you mm-hmm. know, like the boundary issue comes into place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So, and now to talk about your Gemini rising, also known as Ascendant. So with your Gemini rising, you know, it's very talkative. You know, this is the side of you that people may see first before even seeing the, the Virgo because, you know, thinker, you know, curious, adaptable on the, high, on the high side of it, you know, now on the um, uh, low side of it, you know, the, the low road of this sign is that it's also can be a little bit inconsistent and indecisive. And, um, you know, all, although you can also be a great enthusiastic learner, it just stays there and nothing may go through, which is, it's a blessing that you have the Virgo in you because you are very curious. Your mind just works. I mean, at a, I don't even need to see your Mercury sign because, which is the way you think, because you are, your rising sign is ruled by Mercury and <laughs> your Virgo is also ruled by Mercury. So you are, you're, you are naturally super fast ahead of everyone else. Ahead of everyone is feeling like we are so far behind to you, like because you're one step ahead on everything. And now, when we put all together, you're still rising the most. This is something that some people may find more advanced, but I'm going to explain it so everyone understands it. But you know, no matter what um, level in astrology uh, you are, because the modes there are three in us there are three so we have uh cardinal we have fixed and we have mutable cardinal they're initiators they start things that's mm -hmm. aries capricorn sorry aries cancer capricorn libra uh so right now right we have a cancer season just started so this is um a cardinal sign uh the seasons begin in cardinal signs you know Spring mm -hmm. begins with Aries, summer begins with uh, Cancer, fall begins with Libra, and winter begins with a uh, Capricorn season. So now we have fixed sign. These are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. They sustain energy. Mm -hmm. And now mutable signs, that's uh, Gemini, that's Virgo. That's uh, Pisces. These are in, uh, in Sagittarius is the other mutable sign. So you have all three mutable. What does this mean? That this makes you even more vulnerable to being swayed, you know, for by other people. So boundaries for you is very important now and having discernment. When do I need to be flexible? When do I need to, okay, you know, concede? And when do I need to really stand my ground? So this is something for you to really be mindful at all times and not in a fearful way. Not at mm -hmm. all. It's just, you know, to protect your energy. Does it make sense? Oh, perfect sense. I, <laughs> I recently uh, cut off more people and distanced myself from others and boundaries are, are a big deal for me. And that's really what I teach a lot heavily when I work on that, the foundation work with people is boundaries because it's so easy for people to overstep them. And, and like I was saying earlier, like I have been more vocal about it. But people, some people, they want to do what they want to do. And that's where the frustration comes from. So, yes, boundaries are a huge thing for me. And also, even as a Pisces moon, which I found later before I, you know, realized what my moon was, when I'm when I become friends with someone like really close friends with them, I'm also in tune to their energy. I have given friends heads up about something bad. Happened. Like I wouldn't know what the bad thing is, but I know that that feeling. And then I would check in with people and sometimes it would be like, uh, you know, like, oh, that feeling in my chest, like, oh, and then that person would come to mind. And I would just say, hey, man, I got a feeling. And then it, time and time again, and roughly like two weeks or three weeks later, they like, Tia, oh, my God, thank you for that heads up, you know, or even like I know when they're feeling sad, like I'm just so in tune. So I have to have these boundaries intact because once I become, like I said, like a really good friend, we have that connection, like I'm just tapped into you that's that's how it is like that's what it becomes <laughs> yes like, because pisces is the sign of the mystic so you are a natural born mystic you know psychic this is uh it's beautiful 
because you are really embodying it. You're really like, you know, tapping into it. So many people have blocked their feelings because they, it's too much, you know, it can feel like too much. It's that, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, it's like a wave of emotions and some people decide to cut them off. And especially when you have so much, uh, Uh, mercury rule sign so it's beautiful that you have to learn to really work with it because this is the thing with knowing your moon it's so important because that's how you really are going to process that's going to be your defense mechanism too you know when your moon is in a fire sign it's very like cutthroat You know, so if mm -hmm. it's in Aries or Leo or Sagittarius, it can, it's very also very blunt to mm -hmm. the point that it can hurt people's feelings. And you don't have the slightest intention to hurt them, but it just comes up that way. Mm -hmm. Or when the moon is in an air sign, there is just a predisposition to cut off. You know, air is mm -hmm. very intellectual. Air signs, you know, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. These are intellectual signs. This is just all head. They live in their head. So when the moon falls in one of these signs, it's uncomfortable because what is the moon? Emotions. And what are these air signs? You know, mental stimulation. So mm -hmm. can the moon do its job when it falls in these signs? Probably not. Because this is something to look at. You know, can this planet make its job in this given sign where it falls into your chart so when the moon falls into an air sign there's a predisposition just to cut off the feelings and there is just people live in their heads and it's just analyzing them you know they can describe the emotions you know textbook mm -hmm. you know, perfectly But are they feeling it? Oh, yes, I know. I know this is pain or this is, you know, a hurt or no. But are you feeling it? Are you allowing to feel it? Probably not. And that's when, you know, something that I've seen a lot is that illnesses and disease are more frequent on people that have a um, air moon sign than mm. any other because these people disconnect from their bodies. So with anyone that has a, um, their moon in Gemini or Libra yeah, it's, or Aquarius, you know, really got to pay attention to your health because your emotions are really trying to tell you something. But when you cut off from your body, you cut off or you detach or literally detached, it's going to, that's when, you know, emotions are going to creep in. That's why um, one of my favorite books that I give people, it's uh, Healing the Divided Mind by Dr. John E. Sarno. And it's about journaling to relieve pain in the body. I was just typing that down so I can put that in the description as I had pressed mute real quick. <laughs> it said healing. I was like, oh, wait, she stopped talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the, the full name uh, uh, afterwards to make sure I put it in the description so people can get it. But yeah, you know, once once people understand that, it really helps because I know when when I was to feel so frustrated at times and just not really understanding, and I still get frustrated, but it's a different type of frustration. It's, it's one of those, uh, you know, that person doesn't realize their their you know their sign or. Maybe I'm not saying it in a way that they can receive it because their communication style is different because of their moon uh, or rising sign in particular. And it also makes me think, even though I know this is something that's personal and it can't really be filled out on a, on a resume, but how cool would it be if when, when you go to work with someone... You, you can write down, oh, hey, here's my sun, moon, and rising, or at least like my, my rising so we can know how to communicate with people. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. All right, all right. So because you are a rising um, Libra, you know, you'll be best suited for this. Uh, and I even know someone who loves hiring lefties because of something with people who work with the left hand, they, they think differently and it just works so well. And it's like little things like that. Sometimes people don't take into account just how much it plays a huge factor in 
the, the roles we play when it comes to communicating and working with people in, in, in the workforce or even communicating with our friends. 100%. Uh, yes. And I love that astrology has gone a little bit mainstream because more people are paying attention to it. And, you know, just, you know, wanted to say quickly, like, you know, people, if they're not familiar with how to pull their natal chart, well, you're going to need three things, you know, uh, your date of birth, your time of birth and the place of birth, city, state, not the hospital, but city, state and country, of course. And you can quickly go to astro.com and um and go to where it says natal chart free horoscopes you know astro.com free horoscopes natal chart selection and then just you know input all the information in there astro.com free horoscopes natal chart selection so it's uh, super easy to pull it out and then you'll see the chart you know your chart is uh, the um uh it's a picture in the sky this is a snapshot at the time and place of your birth so let's say, because the, the, the bird chart is based on the coordinates of a longitude and altitude. So when, when you are born, you know, all people that were born, you know, I was born in November 15. So 1986, born November 15, 1986. But then not everyone that, you know, someone that was, I was born in Nicaragua, that is in Central America, but if someone November 15, 1986 was born in, you know, Egypt, they're going to have a completely different chart, even if we were mm-hmm. born at the exact same time. Because why? Because it's the coordinates. So the where, the place has a significant um influence you know in our in our chart and that's why there's really not two alike the only person that we may have a similar chart if it was someone that was born at the exact same time I was being born next to me in the next hotel <laughs> you know in the next room the hospital room mm-hmm. I mean that would be the only way so we are really truly unique and knowing where we have the similarities with other people it's super helpful because yes at the workplace oh my goodness I mean that will make it completely if someone has a lot you know with their sun when arising and someone yes is uh have more um uh characteristics that complement each other instead of antagonizing yes it's going to be really helpful you know let's say your you know your boss is a combination of air of in her sun when arising or his sun when arising of air and fire that's going to be very you know uh energetic very uh a high energy whereas someone that has a combination of earth and water in their sun when they're rising that Mm -hmm. person is going to be more introvert whereas the other one will be extrovert and this other person will be introvert and more like low-key but getting the work done you know right yes so Knowing your sun, moon, and rising for sure helps so much in the workplace because it's it helps to select, you know, what kind of job, you know, will be suitable for you. Sometimes you just don't have the personality for a job. It's not that you don't mm-hmm. have the skills. It's just right. going literally against your nature. And that's not fair to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. Exactly. Uh, so once people, and I'm glad you mentioned that website, because I was going to ask you what's, what's the website you would recommend. So once people discover their sun, moon, and rising, what's the, the first thing or the first set of things they should do right after that? So, you know, look, okay, identify, you know, there's a chart in Astro that will tell you where your sun is going to be, where your, your moon falls in, and your rising sign. So write it down in a piece of paper. Or, you know, and you say, okay, my son is saying, um, I'm, I'm going to use another example. You know, my son is in Scorpio, Moon is in uh, Sagittarius, and, you know, rising sign is in a Taurus. So in this example of, you know, look at the elements. That is the first thing you got to look at, the elements. Mm-hmm. Is it? Air, what's, you know, air is very, it's communication, thinking. Fire is movement, action, initiation. Earth is a stability, grounding, responsibility, dependable. And water is feelings and emotions, intuitive, intuition. So 
by looking at that, let's go with this mix. You know, Scorpio sun, okay, that's a water sign. That's intuitive, feelings, emotions, intensity. Because it's a Scorpio. Then we have the Sagittarius moon. So that is fire. Oh, oh I admit this immediately doesn't go with, it's not compatible with the um, water element. So water and earth, compatible. Air and fire are compatible. Any combination thereof is not. So look at that. First thing, okay. If I know that my, my son is in, it's in um, uh, water, using this example, right? And my mm-hmm. moon is in fire. Okay, there's an issue here. The way that this person is, is going to be one way. And then the way the person feels is going to be another. So this person is more in the introvert side because it's a Scorpio, so that's natural and introvert sign. But the moon is going to be in a Sagittarius. So it's going, there's a, um, a polarity there that is uncomfortable. So the moon is super uh, external and it's extrovert and it just, it's blunt and says whatever comes to mind. Mm-hmm. And, and so, <laughs> the Sagittarius doesn't have a filter sometimes. You know, I, I love Sagittarius, you know, it's nothing against, it's just the moon is just how it shows up. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, so, um, <laughs> and then it's a little bit uncomfortable. So there's going to be a disconnect. There's going to be a, a, a little bit of a struggle. And now let's look at the rising with this example that is Taurus rising, it's Earth. So by looking at, oh, Earth, okay, so out of the three, Sun, Moon, and Rising, which one are compatible? What elements are compatible? So then, okay, in this instance, so the Sun sign and the Rising sign, Water and Earth, okay, these two are compatible. So which one is the odd man out in this case? The Moon. The Moon is the Mm. odd man out. So that's the one that you really need to nurture. So the sign... That is the uh, or uh, the, the element that is the ottoman out is the one that you need to nurture the most because you already going to gravitate more with the side of you that is the sun in a Scorpio because it's a water sign and the, the characteristics of that and the characteristics of the Taurus rising that is an earth sign. So those are the part of you that are going to show up more in a healthier way, whereas the uh, uh, element the, uh, you know, the component that is, mm-hmm. um, you know, not being nurtured is the one that is, needs uh, that attention. Does that make sense? Wow, that makes perfect sense because like I, so <laughs> here we go. So many words, I can't get it out. <laughs> <laughs> so w- when you were saying to look at the elements, that makes so much sense. I never thought about it that way because then you can see what needs the most attention. And that's true because, you know, as a Virgo and even Pisces, I love spending time by myself. Like I chill in my house. I'm watching dog videos for hours, comedians on Instagram, <laughs> rocking out to music. I'm like, oh yes, this is my song from the eighties, you know? But then I'm yeah. like, you know what, Tia, you should go out to an event. Like I do like going out to events, but yeah, sometimes it's like, a, uh, but that's the one that needs to be nurtured, the Gemini. Um, so yeah, I do encourage people, you know, look at the element and then figure out what's the odd man out there and nurture that one. So my next question is, how does that play about when we look at our chart as a whole? I had someone read my, my uh, astrology chart years ago, and she said, you have a lot of Leo in your chart more than any other sign. And uh, I believe that the, the, uh, the element of Leo is fire. And it's so funny because I associate myself with the element of fire more than any other element that followed by air. Like I love air. So I'm, I'm curious, how does the overarching uh, say like one Zodiac is just so prominent in, in your chart than, than your, your sun sign or your moon sign or your rise sign how does that play a part in in our lives so that is just another aspect so probably what happens is that you may have a lot of planets a, a, a concentration of planets in leo so in astrology that is called a stellium where mm. three or more planets are in another sign so it's that it gives you a leo flavor in your personality and you're just a leo in disguise 
So it's just another layer that we add to it. So in this case, you know, this is the side of you that is about inspiration, initiation, being spontaneous, you know, having a big passion, exciting energy. So with this Leo energy in you, you're, you know, this, this is important and it cannot be overlooked because yes, that's why it's looking at the chart as a whole, it's phenomenal. We've got to look at the chart as a whole. The sun, moon, and rising is the most basic, which is very important, but then, oh, okay, we cannot, you know, uh, forget about the rest. And with all this Leo energy, you are a force, you know, you, you're a natural born uh, leader, you're determined, very loyal, alpha, self-confident. These are characteristics that are innate to you, that are part of you, uh, that, that come natural. Now, we just got to be careful, you know, with the shadow of Leo. That can be a little bit dramatic. That can be a little bit, you know, um, just busting around, you know, not... Mm-hmm. You can ask nicely, you know, or um, and and too prideful, which is okay to be proud of proud of ourselves, you know. Hey, like a pat in the back is just um, it can get a little bit carried away, you know, with um, mm-hmm. all the Leo energy and can cut off people, you know, because you know being too prideful. So, uh, but yes, it's uh, it's very interesting when you have all this element, all this other component, because it's just another layer to the personality. That's what it is. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I was curious about that. Thank you for explaining that. So uh, I, I liked how you talked about, you know, looking at the opposite side, too, uh, because you also talk about how this helped you to understand your blind spots. So uh, is there um, like a ritual when someone comes to you to help them to understand uh, their birth chart and, you know, their rising sun and moon? How can they go about understanding their blind spot so they can get through that one of the things is to look at the uh, uh, uh the makeup in your chart completely with the elements that is one of my favorite things and the mm-hmm. modes because that tells you immediately where a person needs help so you know with the elements as i mentioned earlier is that you know with a fire initiation uh, with earth is grounding and stability with uh, air is communication you know mental activity thinking communication and with uh, water feelings emotion intuition so when you look at your chart you know you can see with an astro you know that the there's a box for the elements and you can see which one you are missing the most and when we talk about the missing element or the element not necessarily missing, but that just needs more, you know, attention. So for some people, this earth, you know, they may have, you know, usually not always, we have a lot more of one particular element. That means that another element is, you know, needs to be uh, taken care of. So when it, it needs more stimulation. So let's say someone has a lot of fire in their, in their chart. So yes, this person has, and but it's lacking earth. So this person is going to be great at starting things, but may have a uh, difficulty finishing them. Mm-hmm. Why? Because earth is what helps you accomplish things. You know, the ground and stability, uh, building lists, you know, a task, attention to details. That's earth, you know, so planning, organization. And that immediately, you know, well, you, you, a person may be like, I start things, but yes, the blind spot is that you need to nurture, you really need to ground. And for someone like, uh, you know, that has a, a missing, that a lot of fire, like in your case, I will recommend grounding a lot because you already have a predisposition to like, maybe not being too much in your space or being like a, a, f- a floaty because of mm-hmm. all the mutable energy that you have, you know, with your, in your someone arising alone. So the other aside that I look at to, you know, to uh, keep answering your question is, uh, yes, the, the modes as a whole, the, you know, mm-hmm. that's the cardinal starting fix, fix signs have a problem with that being um, adaptable. And with changes, mm. they are the most stubborn because no, my way, my way, my way. But you know what? <laughs> well, our way is not the right way. So <laughs> how's that been working out for you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so for sure. So like cardinal signs, they start things. They just got to be careful with finishing them. 
big signs that are great at, you know, sustaining energy, but they are not good at changing things. So, you know, like have a lot of discernment. They got to have a lot of discernment when to, you know, okay, accept the input of others. That doesn't mean that you fail. That doesn't mean that you're not good enough. You know, it's just, Mm -hmm. you know what, sometimes, you know, we cannot see things the right way. And with mutable signs, because they are too adaptable, you know, they need um, too changeable, uh, then too flexible to you. So and they live in the moment and they're very multitaskers so they can get catter. So grounding helps a lot. So that's where, you know, the blind spots will come in. So the answer to that. So grounding a lot. Yes, Mm -hmm. you know, we can say, go for a walk, you know, on grass. But if you live in the city, you know, you are in an urban area, you may not have access and living in apartment buildings, you may not have access to that. Or yeah, if you need to live near the ocean, for sure, go to the stand. But how often are we doing that? Well, you know, I'm, I, I am not affiliated with these products at all, but I do recommend them a lot because it's grounding. And there's a product called Earthing, earthing.com. And it's, an, it's a mat to help you ground yourself. Mm. And so for people that live in in um in, in in you know in apartment buildings that just don't have access to yes i mean i'm in los angeles so parks here you know <laughs> i wouldn't want to put my feet on the grass in a park <laughs> <laughs> personally <laughs> so yeah so you know we gotta find with creative ways to make it you know to make it work so okay you know plan surround yourself with plants to help you you know to help you ground you know try to like you know water the plants you know like but if someone doesn't have a balcony yes that could be harder so I try to find ways to really make it work and not just be a uh um uh you know just giving a the easy answer or or just a right 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 right? I want to like no I want to make sure I give you a specific um input or a specific homework so people can really like okay you know be able to grow right I I appreciate that you're right it's easy to say go walk out you know with your feet on the grass and bask in the sun and someone's like yeah no that's that's not happening Exactly. So yeah, I like that you you provide the extra uh, you know options and yeah when, when when you were talking and and you you were saying you know there are some people who are the starters but aren't the finishers. I was thinking how many times someone got called a procrastinator, a bum, being lazy when literally their function is to start things and someone else. I'm not saying that they can't finish what they started, but part of their makeup is to light fires, you know, and like, okay, now now you got to fan it this way and that way. And just imagine if they knew that and other people saw that and then placed them in the area where they could, I don't know, be like a coach to some extent, like, Hey, I'm getting you started. And it was up to you to finish it. 100%. Like, you know, these are people that are great, like in, you know, in either if they cannot be like in higher up leadership uh, positions, which will be the best, possible outcome Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know like sales those are good because they're able to start conversations they're able to connect they're able to inspire other people whereas people with fixed signs with a lot of fixed sign in their chart they they have a hard time starting things you know they may have the uh, uh, endurance to finish them Mm-hmm. But they, um, and I don't want to say that they lack the initiative because it's not that. It's just there's so much uh, planning in their head that they they kill a project before even starting it with all the uh, possible <laughs> outcomes and how to do it like that. You know, there's so many scenarios for them to start that they end up not starting anything, you know, whereas <laughs> the person that has a lot of cardinal energy just boom, doesn't even like think it overthink it just does it. So for people that have a lot of fixed energy, you know, like, you know, just giving you a a random example, you know, a project manager, being a project manager is great for these people because they're able to endure and and, and sustain the project, right? Whereas, you know, the person with cardinal energy is the the person that will bring the project, you know, will bring the work over and then, okay, Mm -hmm. the project manager takes it, you know, from there. And an immutable sign, a mutable person, you know, will help both, you know, can help both, but may have a hard time, um, 
you know, either starting or finishing, you know, uh, but uh, this is the whole makeup in a chart, of course, you know, and Mm -hmm. so it's just, it's good to see where a person, you know, falls in the team there, you know, and they're happy, you know, they're, they're, they're happy people, you know, mutable people are, so it, it would, they don't care, you know, they don't have to have the fancy title, they don't care about, you know, like, oh, you know, if, the, if they get the fancy title, great, but if not, you know, they're not hung up on things, so it's, uh, they let go, they easily let go, so they, they, they're not holding on to, to heavy emotions or things like that, it's easier for them to let go, so, Yes, having this in a workplace will be fantastic with teammates. <laughs> yes, yes. Like hopefully that'll become commonplace where it's so people feel comfortable. Hey, you know, everyone, it's an option. You know, go to uh, what do you, you say, uh, astro.com, you know, and just, you know, tell us your sun, moon rising, uh, the, the main uh, uh, zodiac that pops up and let's look at the elements and, and we can have like a group discussion or whatever. So that way we can best place you. And of course, nothing's really guaranteed. Like it could be that person is just a jerk. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> <laughs> but it, it really helps to, to get to uh, a point where, you know, the, and I know it's a little bit off on a tangent, but I, I just see how it just helps so many on, on so many layers, as opposed to what are all your credentials? Because now that gets so internalized. I've seen so many people, myself included, who we, we worked so hard, so hard in school and, you know, college and all that, because we had to get the credentials, right? We need the credentials. Yep. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I've seen some pretty, quote unquote, the, the qualified people not be good leaders, not be good co-workers, just not a good person because of, you know, whatever, X, Y, and Z. And I've seen people who, you know, they don't have that quote unquote, you know, that polished resume and it is not that out the ballpark because there's just so many factors involved. But to understand this would just help so much, even how, like I was saying earlier, we communicate with people, how we take care of ourselves. Like I was saying earlier with that, that air energy, I love getting that air in the morning for someone who, and, and that so in the mornings, I would open up my window or I'll, I'll go outside, get some fresh air, and I would drink a cold bottle of water. And, you know, hearing you talk about, you know, the Pisces and the water and, and you know, talk more about the elements. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. So someone who may have like a fire rising, they might be like, I need to light my candles in the morning or, you know, yes. or something like that. Or so, to a um, quick workout, you know, like these are the people yeah. that keep running and it's, you know, it could be super windy and cold and they're running and I'm like oh my god how can you but you know what like you psychopath (laughs) (laughs) goodness I always say are you from Alaska are you from Antarctica like oh my god it doesn't phase you the weather but you know what meanwhile uh, I'm shocking my body with cold water looking at this person running like you weirdo yes Yes, but you know what? It's their genetic makeup, astrologically mm-hmm. speaking. They need it. They if they don't run, if they don't go for a jog, it's feel like, you know, they'll die. You know, they're completely they get antsy because mm-hmm. they need to stimulate that energy going. They need to like keep their energy. It's it's you know, it's crucial to them. So it's funny because some people use astrology to judge people and it's the other way around. You know, mm. understanding people, you know, understanding the signs will give more compassion, you know, to accept how someone is, you know, and it, mm-hmm. it, it becomes, it can, this can be your partner, you know, if your partner needs to move, you know, and you are the opposite that you, you recharge by just laying down, but the other person recharge by doing stuff, believe mm-hmm. it or not, that's, that's your Mars, you know, if your Mars is in an, ex, you know, uh, extrovert sign, you fire air sign, in it, it recharges by doing, whereas when your Mars is in a, um, introvert sign or in an earth water sign then yes it needs to really have me time quiet time so it's uh it's important to really accept everyone and and have compassion for everyone and not use astrology to judge because no like we are all our own little world and it's it's Mm -hmm. fantastic to see 
when we accept others by who they how they are and like yeah this person needs to run no matter the weather and I'm like no matter that if it's <laughs> cold I ain't going out you know like so but right. you know that that's that's uh my 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 predisposition naturally so it's beautiful to see you know how we can really accept each other our partners our friends you know that friend that really said that slip up something and like oh she's just being a Sagittarius I love her it's okay it's her nature there's no ill will there's no bad intention you know <laughs> right no, exactly and it's so funny I love that you said not to judge because <laughs> Gemini's get so much hate and it's like you guys don't understand we are adaptable. Like I know it's my rising sign, but I also relate to, you know, Geminis who have their, their sun sign and, and, and that Gemini, because whenever I shout out Gemini, like, this is my rising sign, Gemini, like, oh, thank you. Like it's, it's all love because they get it, you know, and people who don't understand astrology, a lot of them say, oh, Geminis are just two faced people. It's no, which it, we, they're not. <laughs> they're right. <honestly>. We- <laughs> And Geminis are too forgetful and too in the moment to be two-faced. They couldn't keep up. I mean, they can barely keep up with one face. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And then people get so many versions of us. You know, there are yeah. some people and like, it's so funny because so I don't party like I used to anymore. Like I, I can never step foot in a club ever again. I'll be okay. But every now and then, like, I would just talk about it. something will remind me of it. And some people just tell me, I can't even imagine you draking, like, honey, have a seat. <laughs> I can tell you some stories, okay? <laughs> and hold my liquor very well. But it's just funny because th- they will never see that side of me, right? So to them, if, if they even saw me drinking, they might be like, what, what is she doing? Is she just trying to be sociable? Even, like, um... A few months ago, I was going to say recently, but actually it's probably like six months ago now. Uh, I was just, again, at a social setting, just, you know, casual at a, at a friend's home. And this one guy goes, oh, are you going to nurse that drink? Y'all? I'm like, here we go again. You don't know me. You don't know me. Yes. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just sipping and talking. Trust me. I will drink you under the table. Trust me. <laughs> but, but it's just like, you know, people see certain versions of you and other people won't see any of those other things. So if they even get a glimpse of it, it's like it's like a shock to their system. So, yeah, you're just <laughs> you're not going to see something. <laughs> yes. You know, I have met, you know, like Sagittarius. You know, Sagittarius are usually the life of the party, you know, mm-hmm. like they are very outgoing which is no wonder Sagittarius season is in December right in December is full mm-hmm. of parties so mm-hmm. <laughs> and and you know I've met Sagittarius that are like such a Capricorn in disguise you know and that they have <laughs> zero fire like zero like <laughs> fun you know it's just all work 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 you know so and and you know what it's that uh, yeah it's you know so knowing that it's not like oh what kind of Sagittarius are you or things like that? No, like, you know, so understanding, you know, there's more mm-hmm. towards sun sign. It's just, uh, it's, uh, it gives, so, okay, so, you know, it, it helps with our personal relationships for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. And so this also has me thinking about making, you know, life decisions and, and things like that. And, And I know some people take longer to make decisions. So is there a a process or like a tip someone can, and and I know we talked about like per the elements, but is is there something that, that uh, the, the person can look at element wise for their Zodiac that can help them understand uh, even further their decision-making process? Because I know we talked about understanding how we communicate with ourselves and things like that. But when it comes to decision making, does that change or is that a- another add on to that approach? So that will be that's yes, it, it, it changes somewhat. And that will be more like your Mercury territory. Mm, so, mm-hmm. You know, you have your your makeup, right? And <clears throat> with your sun, moon and rising, excuse me. And um, with your Mercury, that's communication. That's your thinking process. That's your intellect. That's the um your reasoning so with uh, your mercury it's um how do you really you, is it fixed is it not changeable or is it indecisive you know then we will look at is it um mutable signs tend to be indecisive but also 
looking at the element, air signs can be indecisive. Uh, so this is something that people with air and fire and mercury struggle a lot. And how would I, you know, the, the, the medicine for that will be like, really, you know, it can be something as, you know, using a pendulum. What mm. I, you know, I, you know, put in, uh, in pieces of papers, the answer and just using a pendulum to help with the decision and see how you feel, how, you know, once the decision is made through using the pendulum and writing it down in a piece of paper and you, um, put it uh, when you're not even seeing what the, what is in the paper and you just wrap it so with that that can be very helpful and some people even like tossing a coin in the air and saying okay what I, what am I wishing for right because mm-hmm. it, it, the indecisiveness of that mercury it can paralyze you to the point that it can really affect your job you know even relationships because if you're not grounding your mind and journaling is this is when it comes really helpful because you are more in touch with your mm. thought process by writing things down. Otherwise, when Mer- because Mercury in an air and fire sign that tend to be the um, you know indecisive and a little bit scattered, it's too much going on in the mind. So you need to ground it. And how do you mm. ground it? Then by journaling, by literally looking back at your thoughts. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense because with, with those action items, it, it also takes it a little further, right? Because someone can think, oh, well, you know, I'm, you know, air rising, et cetera, and they can approach it that way, but then we can easily get in our head. So I love that you said the pendulum or, you know, flip a coin because it helps us also to get out of our head and go a little bit externally to help yeah. make that decision. Yes, for sure. <laughs> so any final words i know we covered a lot <laughs> yes <laughs> any final words will be you know really we came all here as unique people and literally comparing yourself like is the most that we you know waste of it's a huge waste of time because we're literally unique all of us and we all have our strengths so it's just about finding out what really works for you based on your chart based on your the combination of the science based on the elements that you have because you see that your best friend is an influencer but and you and you see how you know things are coming easy to her but if if it's if you're trying to become her trying to be an influencer and it's just so much harder for you that's you know because it's not in your you know the extroversion and you're more in the introvert you know like really learning to accept ourselves you know Mm -hmm. it's with Mm -hmm. astrology it's the gift to free us to really accept ourselves for who we are and that um we're here for our own purpose, you know, and that purpose can, can be make people laugh, you know, or just keep things organized, you know, we don't have to have that big deal, you know, uh, and it, or, you know, comparing because our strengths are so different. So mm-hmm. it's just a matter of compassion, you know, compassion is through astrology. Wow. Yeah, that that was so beautiful because some people you're right, especially with this age of social media, people see someone like, oh, man, like I would love to do that one. But then they take on being that person instead of being themselves in that space and using what that person does as inspiration. And to accept ourselves, it's, it's so true, because before I learned about my Pisces moon, moon, you know, it's like, oh, did that literally would be on my report card. Tia gets frustrated when she doesn't get it right on the first time. <laughs> like, I remember my stupid little protractor, you know, and <laughs> if I just, if I knew then, like, Tia, you're just, you know, you're passionate about this, you're intuitive about this, take a deep breath, you could do it. And not saying that I didn't have good teachers, it's just they didn't, no, no one talked about that. This is, you know, late 80s, early 90s. No one talked about <laughs> if your child is frustrated or um, what was another one? Like, I didn't talk too much in class, but if I had like a buddy, you know, we was like, oh, she's doing it. So it's, it's just so funny. Or I would doodle a lot. 
to my, cause I, I went yeah. to Catholic school too. And they would check our notebooks. I'm like, mm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so many things get doused over the years and to, to learn astrology. And, and I, it's my pet peeve. I don't like how this is called new age. There's nothing new about mm-hmm. astrology. There is not new age. Stop it, please. Yes, <laughs> so I, right. So I love that people are learning more and more about this because it's also giving them back their powers. So no one can say, oh, you're too sensitive or you're not getting it or, you know, you never finish anything. You just, you're a procrastinator. It's like, no, 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 no. I know myself very well. And a lot of times uh, when, when I didn't act on something right away, it was really for my benefit. Like I, I would have like a little resistance to something. Like I can't really explain it, but then I had to tell muggles, you know, like, well, why didn't you do this? I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm figuring it out, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, weigh my options, but really just like, eh, eh, there's something with that. And then I learned later, oh, that's why got it. So yeah, I, I just loved everything you said. It resonated so well, such great insights. And I'm going to uh, have the book you rec- recommended and the website in the description of this episode. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, sure thing. So that is a wrap. I am sending everyone so many blessings, lots of love. You know, I am rooting for you. Remember to be kind to yourself until next time. Thank you so much for tuning in, Magical One. Let's keep in touch. Join the VIP email list by going to tmariejohnson.com. And as always, I'm sending you lots of love, many blessings. I'm rooting for you. And remember to be kind to yourself. Until next time.